Welcome back to PC Builder, I'm Jason. Now we have a lot to cover from Computex 2024, including Nvidia replacing gamers, Intel strikes back, AMD rolls out Ryzen 9000, and tons of other news. Buckle up for this roller coaster ride through cool PC tech coming soon, and remember to like the video if you get value out of it, this guy really appreciates it, and of course subscribe for more cool PC content. With that, Let's jump into it. Let's start off with NVIDIA, where CEO Jensen Wang mostly talked about AI, but there was a lot for gamers if you read between the lines of the two-hour meandering AI babble fest that was the NVIDIA Computex keynote. And I know, because I woke up at 5 a.m. local time to watch it, every painful minute of it. While Jensen detailed the new Blackwell AI infrastructure, there was no mention of any gaming GPUs based on Blackwell, which will be the RTX 5000 series. Now to be fair, I was no longer expecting an RTX 5090 or RTX 5080 announcement, given what we'd heard in the rumor mill that Nvidia was changing up their RTX 5000 launch plans to push out the RTX 5080 first. Now this is reportedly due to not wanting to offend the very large Chinese market because the current US government ban on AI exports to China would not allow the RTX 5090 to be shipped there. Heck, they can't even get RTX 4090s anymore. So they decided to ship the RTX 5080 first as a global launch, which would include China. And because Nvidia's AIB board partners were ready with the RTX 5090, but not the 5080, that meant shoving everything back likely to the fall. That would also mean that the RTX 5080 is weaker than the RTX 4090, probably in line with the RTX 4090 Dragon Edition that was cut down to be able to be compliant with US AI export limits to China. Now at one point when discussing the new Blackwell AI GPUs, Jensen did pick up what looked like it might be an RTX 5090 from the demo table on stage and carry it across the stage, but just said, this is a gaming GPU, and then set it down on the other side. Now the GPU itself didn't have a name badge on it, so it might have been an RTX 4090 or an RTX 4080, but then why didn't it have a label on it? Typically when Jensen does this, he at least takes a moment to brag a bit about the GPU and mentions it by name. But he just said it's one of the most powerful gaming GPUs without naming it. Now this is a GPU. This is one of the most advanced GPUs in the world, but this is a gamer GPU. It definitely felt a little bit like Nvidia was trolling gamers. In fact, there was virtually no mention of gaming at all. In many ways, Nvidia seems somewhat embarrassed to have a gaming audience as they try to look like serious tech frontier leaders in front of the business and finance world who this keynote felt very tailored for rather than tech enthusiasts like gamers. Nvidia's message was simple. AI is the next frontier and Nvidia holds all the cards and gamers, who are they again? And Nvidia intends AI to replace not just gamers, but literally everyone else. Do you work in customer service? They'll also be AI customer service agents, making the interaction more engaging and personalized. Nvidia has plans in the very near future to replace you with an AI. And it isn't just customer service. Do you or someone you love have a health issue and wanna to talk to a healthcare professional about a problem that they're having with their medication? Or digital healthcare workers who will check on patients. The antibiotics you've been prescribed, ciprofloxacin and metronidazole don't contain penicillin. So it's perfectly safe for you to take them. Well, too bad, because Nvidia is also very serious about outsourcing nurses to AI, probably doctors too. But don't worry, I'm included too. And they'll even be AI brand ambassadors setting the next marketing and advertising trends. Hi, I'm Ima, Japan's first virtual model. As Nvidia very seriously demonstrated AI influencers that companies could use to promote their products and push the company line. And these aren't gonna be cartoonishly animated and easy to identify AI figures. These are gonna be lifelike AI down to the skin pores and voice inflection. And I wish I was making this next part up. But Jensen seriously said that this is gonna to extend to the physical world where AI robots are gonna start taking all the other jobs too. Robots, interacting with robots, building products that are robotic. Oh, but you say, that sounds expensive and hard, so it probably won't happen. Oh no, Jensen says. I'm really excited about this area because obviously the easiest robot to adapt into the world are human or robots because we built the world for us. So basically the future he paints is a kinder, gentler Skynet where humans don't need to exist at all. At least the ordinary ones like you and me. And while this still sounds like some science fiction movie that's decades away from actually happening. Robotics is here. Physical AI is here. This is not science fiction, and it's being used all over Taiwan, and it's just really, really exciting. What could possibly go wrong? 
Let's jump over to AMD's Computex keynote, where they did announce new Ryzen 9000 series CPUs based on the Zen 5 architecture and the successor to their current generation of consumer desktop Ryzen 7000 CPUs. Now, AMD gave us a pre-briefing. We did a whole video on Ryzen 9000, which I'll link down in the video description if you want the full details. The four CPUs that they announced are the Ryzen 9 9950X, Ryzen 9 9900X, Ryzen 7 9700X and the Ryzen 5 9600X, but no 9000 X 3D variants or any RDNA Force based Radeon GPUs in the RX 8000 series. We weren't really expecting those anyways, probably gonna get them closer to the end of this year or early next year. Now the Ryzen 9000 CPUs that were announced will launch at a yet unspecified date in July, 2024, and pricing hasn't been made public yet, but AMD did promise to get it to us closer to launch. AMD also increased its commitment to the AM5 platform through 2027 plus, a full two more years than they had previously made, and a welcome announcement to those of us like me who want to see AM5 repeat the long life of AM4. AMD also promised significantly better performance at much lower power drop for the Ryzen 9000 series. With the exception of the Ryzen 9950X, all the other CPUs will have a substantially lower TDP than their Ryzen 7000 series counterparts, while AMD is claiming a 16% uplift in instructions per clock, or IPC. That's basically the amount of stuff that the CPU can do in a single clock cycle. Remember, these are first party claims and will need to be verified with independent testing. So take all of this with a grain of salt. Meanwhile, the Ryzen 9600X and 9700X will run slightly faster than the Ryzen 7600X and 7700X, given that the claimed IPC uplift from Ryzen 5000 to Ryzen 7000 was 13%. This means that Ryzen 9000 promises to be an even larger uplift gen over gen. AMD also announced the X870 and X870E chipset motherboards. And of course, you're gonna be able to run Ryzen 9000 series CPUs on existing 600 series AM5 motherboards with a BIOS update. I gave my full thoughts on Ryzen 9000 in our AMD announcement video, so check that out for more details. But Intel also had an announcement, and especially with their recent debacle with the i9 CPUs in the 13th and 14th generation dying to too much power usage, let alone the fact that 14th gen wasn't really a new generation, but just 13th gen CPUs in new boxes, the heat is really on them. But at least from their announcement, it looks like Intel might actually be striking back. Let's start with their very impressive claims around their XE2 Battle Mage GPU architecture. And as always, I want to emphasize these are all first party claims that will need to be independently tested. In fact, let's start with the name. Nowhere in any of their materials could I find the name Battle Mage, something that they seemed especially proud of when they rolled it out in the original Intel Arc GPU roadmap. Now they're just calling it XE2, but this served to further underscore how in the era of these companies chasing AI, Nvidia and Intel at least seem to want to distance themselves from gaming in front of an AI audience. That being said, the claims on XE2 GPUs are quite impressive with Intel basically saying that they've learned a lot from the Intel Arc GPUs, their first generation, and are doing an almost complete ground up rebuild of the architecture, compression, encoding, drivers, literally everything. Intel claims this results in a massive performance gain per power usage up to 12.5 times the previous generation. Some of these improvements are to efficiency of processing, some are to power efficiency, others to core layout, ray tracing units, again, pretty much every part of the GPU. But the biggest change seems to be that these changes will enable games to just work on day one rather than having to wait for a specific driver optimization. Something we saw in games like Starfield, where the game ran fine at launch on AMD and Nvidia GPUs, even without optimized drivers, but either ran terribly on Intel GPUs or frankly just didn't run at all. In my opinion, this is the number one thing that Intel needed to fix in order to be able to recommend their GPUs without reservation the way it can for Nvidia Nvidia and AMD, and I'm really hopeful that what we'll get is exactly what was promised. But Intel wasn't done there, and they also introduced what they claimed are significant improvements in the next-gen mobile CPU architecture, codenamed Lunar Lake, over the previous generation Meteor Lake mobile architecture. Now, we don't typically cover mobile CPUs, but this is interesting because we do expect a similar architecture to be used in Intel's next-generation Arrow Lake CPUs for desktop which will go up against AMD's Ryzen 9000 series CPUs. In fact, if you miss it, Intel is launching Arrow Lake desktop CPUs in the fourth quarter of this year, what it's gonna rename as Core Ultra rather than 15th gen. I can't blame you. To 
CEO Pat Gelsinger mentioned it so fast, I almost missed it. All we got was a single image on the roadmap, on the screen for a brief minute, without any real details. But if the improvements to their Lunar Lake CPUs are anything to go by, Arrow Lake could give AMD a run for its money. Remember, first party data still needs to be confirmed. Intel says much of these performance gains are through overhauling the CPU architecture to be more efficient and maximize performance per die space and power. They really do need significant uplifts here if they're gonna compete with AMD's chiplet technology in their Zen architecture, as it has allowed AMD to not only produce more power efficient CPUs with higher performance, but to do so at a significant price advantage, which has seen Intel's CPU market share plummet. One thing that will change is the removal of hyper-threading, also known as simultaneous multi-threading or SMT, which just means the CPU core can do more than one thing at a time, hence CPUs with six cores and 12 threads. Intel claims that the removal of hyper-threading also remove some of the control circuitry required to make hyperthreading work, which makes space for more cores, and that it all balances out as a net performance per die space increase. Note that Intel isn't going to abandon hyperthreading entirely and still plans to do it on CPUs that only have performance cores. There's a lot more to Lunar Lake redesign, and of course we'll do a full breakdown when we get the full Arrow Lake desktop CPU information towards the end of this year. Of course, all the major Atom board partners showcase their upcoming X870E and X870 motherboards focused on Ryzen 9000 series CPUs and their Z890 Intel motherboards for Arrow Lake desktop CPUs. That's right, we're getting the motherboards before the CPUs. Gigabyte showcase case their AORUS Gaming and Extreme lineups, including their all-white ice boards. MSI showed off its Edge and Pro Gaming focused boards, as well as their Project Zero boards with backside connectors. ASRock showed off a ton of motherboards from its Aqua, Tai Chi, and Formula series. And ASUS showed off its ROG Strix boards, including its BTF motherboards with backside connectors. These next-gen announcements are definitely not your dad's motherboards. The theme here seems to be absolutely insanely huge VRMs, state-of-the-art VRM cooling, a crazy amount of USB and M.2 connections, along with USB 4 support, quality of life features like toolless M.2 installation and easy GPU latches, and most importantly, amazing RGB and super clean styling because you want it to look awesome too. We'll definitely take a look at motherboards for Ryzen 9000 and Intel Arrow Lake CPUs and give you our recommendations, especially once we get actual pricing so stay subscribed for that. Of course, we got a number of PC case, cooler, and other announcements as well. Now, some of the highlights include Fantex's new Evolve X2 with wraparound glass exterior and pre-routed PSU cable extensions for the cleanest of looks. Corsair's new Groove pump cap for its AIO coolers with amazing RGB. Deepcool's giving everything from coolers to cases a digital readout. NZXT's new redesigned H7 flow, which maximizes airflow. And like a cicada that comes out of the ground every seven years, Nocto is finally releasing an update to the NHD15, which it says will increase airflow by 30% with its redesigned fan. But if you want it in black, you're going to have to wait until at least 2025. That's an Octua motto. Good things come to those who wait, as long as you don't die of old age before it gets there. Remember, if you got value out of this video, give it a like. It makes a huge difference to the channel, especially this guy right here. And of course, subscribe. Click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. Speaking of cool content, did you check out our Ryzen 9000 content right here? All the details or check out our best 1440p gaming monitor 2024 buying guide right here. And we'll catch you on the next one. <laughs> Yawn kitty.